<coughs> hey guys, <coughs> good evening and welcome back again to your Unacademy Neat English channel. I hope all of you are doing great, having a good time. So my dear students, <coughs> before starting this particular session, just let me know once in the chats if I'm perfectly audible and visible to every one of you. Quickly, just let me know in the chats if I'm perfectly audible and visible to everyone. Let me know with the thumbs ups quickly. <coughs> welcome back guys, welcome. Hello Sanjeev, hello Sayed, Shafiq, Sounds, Beats Academy. Welcome back, welcome back. So quickly, give me some green signal from the chats people. Let me know in the chats with the thumbs ups if all of you can hear me. If I'm perfectly audible and visible to every one of you, quickly in the chats, yes? <coughs> good evening guys, good evening, good evening. Just give me a second and we shall be starting. <coughs> perfect guys, perfect, perfect. So as you all must be knowing, we have started the chapter mole concept and I have planned some seven sessions for this particular chapter because Again, I'm telling you, this particular chapter, it's the most important chapter as far as your physical chemistry is concerned. So, it's better to give some proper time to this particular chapter so that there will be no issues in understanding the rest of the physical chemistry. Yeah? And out of the seven sessions, I've already taken two sessions of this chapter. And today, it's going to be the third session. So, what all things we shall be covering in the Today's session, let me quickly show it to you. <coughs> so dear students, before starting the session, the ones who have not liked the session, please do like the session. Share this particular session with everyone whosoever is preparing for NEET 2024 or even 2025. This particular session is for everyone. And at the same time, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, I would want all of you to subscribe to your Unacademy need English channel as well right so let's have a look on the table of the content which we are going to do in the today's session my dear students these are the three topics some very 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 important topics which are frequently used in the rest of the physical chemistry as well starting with average molar mass of the gaseous mixture this will be our first topic which we shall be covering today after that we shall be talking about vapor density which is used in chemical equilibrium as well, if you remember. And then you have got percentage composition, which is used almost everywhere in your physical chemistry, in almost all the chapters of physical chemistry. Okay? So, the first topic which we will be covering today, that is average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. But, before starting the first topic, I would want you guys to solve one question. The concepts which I gave you in the first two sessions, you will have to use the same concept and solve a question. And what is the question? It's a very simple and basic neat standard question which is on your screen. But I'm sure a lot of students will do a mistake while solving this question. So that is the reason why I have come up with this particular question to start with, okay? So dear students, let's have a look exactly what the question says and what are we supposed to calculate. Calculate the total number of atoms. Calculate the total number of atoms in 1.8 liters of H2O liquid. <clears throat> the question is, we have got 1.8 liters of water. The water is present in the liquid form. We have got 1.8 liters of water. And we have to calculate the total number of atoms which will be present in 1.8 liters of water. If you remember in the last session, I told you categorically, whenever you will be supposed to calculate the total number of atoms, what we are supposed to do in the beginning, we are supposed to convert the given quantity into number of moles, right? The given quantity right here is the volume of water. It is the volume of water. So we have to convert this volume of water into moles of water. So you must be thinking, since we are given with volume of water, so I'll be dividing this term directly by 22.4, you will be getting the moles. That's what you'll be thinking, right? But my dear students, that formula is only, only and only valid for gases 
and those gases must be present at STP. But over here, we are not given with a gas, we are given with a liquid. It is a liquid. So you are not going to divide this term directly by 22.4, right? You are not going to do that. You are not going to use that formula. Now, how exactly you'll be solving this question? Have a look, people. First of all, we are given with the volume of the water. So volume of the water, as per the question, is given to us as 1.8 liters. That means we are given with 1800 milliliters of H2O liquid, right? If I ask you, what about the density of water? What about the density of water? Do remember from now onwards, density of water is nothing. It is just one gram per ml. Density of liquid water, it is equal to one gram per ml, correct? Now, my dear students, density of any substance is always equal to mass of substance divided by volume of substance. So I'm writing a term here as density of water. So instead of density of water, can I write mass of water in grams divided by volume of water in milliliters? This whole term is called as density of water and it is given to us exactly as one which is something all of you must be knowing, right? Now look at the question carefully. So I can write mass of water in grams divided by what is the volume of water in ml which is given to us? It is, as per the question, it is 1800 ml and this term overall is equal to 1, correct? And what is this one? This is the density of water basically which is in terms of grams per ml. 1 gram per ml, right? Now, as per simple calculation, can we calculate the mass of water from here? Absolutely, you can calculate the mass of water, which is going to be 1, 1 gram per ml, multiplied by 1800 ml, multiplied by 1800 ml. So, this per ml and ml got cancelled. So, what we got over here, we got the mass of water in grams as 1800. So, so the first thing which I did over here, the first thing which I did over here, what is it? Have a look, people. What is it? The first thing which I did over here, I converted the given volume of liquid water into its mass. So I must say, I must say 1.8 liters of water will be having the mass of 1800 grams. Point number one. Point number one. Now point number two. What is the second point? Now we will be following the same procedure. As I told you, whenever we have to calculate the total number of atoms, whenever you have to calculate the total number of atoms, you have to convert the given quantity into moles. Now our given quantity is basically the mass of water, right? And you know how to convert mass into moles. You know that. So let me calculate the number of moles of water. It is given, it will be equal to given mass of water in grams, which is 1800 grams divided by molar mass of water, as you all must be knowing now, it's 18 grams per mole. So what will be the value over here? The value over here is simply going to be 100. So you can say in 1.8 liters of liquid water, there are actually 100 moles of water present, right? In 1800 grams of water, in 1800 grams of water, there are basically 100 moles of water present. So my first step is done. We have converted the given quantity into number of moles. This is the first step. Now what is the second step? Second step is to convert moles into molecules. And how do you convert moles into molecules? You just have to multiply the moles by the Avogadro's number. You will be getting the number of molecules. So I must say the number of molecules of water. The number of molecules of water. It will be equal to what? It will be equal to 100 multiplied by Avogadro's number. So these many molecules of water we have. So I must say in 1.8 liters of water, in 1800 grams of water, there will be these many molecules of water present. Okay? Right? Now people, the question is almost done and dusted. What are we supposed to calculate? We are supposed to calculate the total number of atoms present in 1.8 liters of water. 
total number of atoms present in 1800 grams of water total number of atoms present in 100 moles of water total number of atoms present in 100 na molecules of water right so can i say can i write one simple statement like this one molecule of water can you let me know how many atoms are present in one molecule of water it's simple one molecule of water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom right so can i say one molecule of water contains actually the three atoms yes now you tell me if one molecule of water contains three atoms two molecules of water can will contain multiplied by two three molecules will contain multiplied by three four molecules will contain multiplied by four and how many moles of water how many molecules of water do we have 100 na so 100 na molecules of water will contain 3 multiplied by 100 na atoms in total so the answer of this particular equation is going to be 300 na atoms this is something which we were supposed to calculate as far as the question was concerned right so be careful with this particular question i know majority of the students what they would have done they would have divided this particular term directly by 22.4 to get the moles, right? But that formula is only valid for the gases. But over here, the water is not present in the gaseous state. It is present in the liquid state. So do not follow that procedure. That's wrong. So what I exactly did, I converted the volume into the mass. Then I used the general procedure. Given quantity, mass into moles, moles into molecules. Then one molecule of water contains three atoms. So 100 Na molecules of water will contain 300 Na atoms. Just let me know quickly in the chats if this is clear to everyone. With the thumbs ups, everyone people, quickly. <clears throat> let me know quickly in the chats if it is super clear to everyone. Quickly in the chats. <clears throat> Can you solve this sort of a question if it comes? Yeah? Everyone with the thumbs ups, everyone. I want the chat box to be running all the time. <clears throat> yes, Shweta, you can say that. Number of atoms is equal to moles multiplied by Avogadro's number multiplied by atomicity. Of course, the choice is all yours. <clears throat> Perfect. I hope this is clear to everyone. Now, people, one more thing I want to share with you. That's again important. Something very important, okay? Just have a look on what I say now. Understand properly what I'm going to say. <coughs> For example, <coughs> I'm writing a statement over here. If I write one molecule of H2SO4, one molecule of H2SO4, can you let me know how many hydrogen atoms are present in one molecule of H2SO4. I can say in one molecule of H2SO4, there are two hydrogen atoms present. It contains two hydrogen atoms, right? Apart from two hydrogen atoms, can I say it contains one sulfur atom as well? Yes, it contains one sulfur atom. Can I say it contains four oxygen atoms as well? Yes, it contains four oxygen atoms as well yeah right one molecule of h2o support contains two hydrogen atoms correct perfect now my dear students understand what i'm going to say instead of this particular statement if i write something like this one mole of h2o support one mole of h2o support contains what all things one mole of h2so4 means we have got 6.022 into 10 raised power 23 h2so4 molecules so basically we have got 6.022 into 10 raised power 23 h2so4 molecules that's something which i call as one mole of h2so4 right now if i ask you one simple thing in one mole of h2so4 can you let me know how many moles of hydrogen atoms are there? How many moles of H are there? First of all, first of all, before doing all this calculation, let me tell you one more thing. 
instead of this particular term mole, you can use one more terminology. You can use gram atoms or sometimes you can use gram molecules. Right? Sometimes in a question, they'll ask you calculate the gram atoms. That means indirectly they're asking you calculate the moles. They might ask you calculate the gram molecules. So indirectly they're asking you calculate the moles. Right? So moles, instead of moles, you can write gram atoms, you can write gram molecules, depending on the situation. For example, have a look. If I write one mole of H2SO4, can I first of all say one mole of H2SO4 contains contains two moles of H? Yes, it contains two moles of H. Did I take hydrogen over here in atomic form or molecular form? I took hydrogen here in atomic form. So I can write it like this as well. Instead of two moles of H, I can write two. Instead of moles, I can write gram atoms or gram molecules. Since I have taken hydrogen in atomic form, so I'll be writing gram atoms. Two gram atoms of hydrogen. Two gram atoms of hydrogen, right? Perfect. Now, one mole of H2SO4. Can I say it contains one mole of sulfur as well? Yes, it contains one mole of sulfur as well. Perfect. Can I say one mole of H2SO4 contains four moles of O as well? Yes, it contains four moles of O as well. Now here, if I ask you whether I have taken oxygen in atomic form or molecular form, I have taken oxygen in atomic form. So instead of the term mole, I can use gram atoms again. So I can say four gram atoms of oxygen. four gram atoms of oxygen, right? Yes, so one mole of H2SO4, it contains two moles of H, it contains one mole of S, and it contains four moles of O, right? Now, dear students, few more things we can say, we can conclude few more things, have a look. Till now, hydrogen I took in atomic form, oxygen I took in atomic form. If I want to take hydrogen in molecular form, if I want to take hydrogen in molecular form, then can I say one mole of H2SO4, it contains one mole of H2? Yes, it contains one mole of H2. It contains one mole of H2. Or you can say it contains two moles of H. Now here you can say the hydrogen is taken in molecular form. So instead of the term mole over here, what I can use? Can I use gram atoms or gram molecules? I can use the term gram molecule. So I can say one mole of H2SO4 contains one gram molecule of hydrogen. <clears throat> it contains one gram molecule of hydrogen. I hope all these things are becoming clear to you with time. Now you tell me one more thing. If I talk about oxygen, we know one mole of H2SO4 it contains four moles of O. It contains four moles of O, correct? But if I want to take oxygen in molecular form, if I want to take oxygen in molecular form, can I say one mole of H2SO4, it contains, it contains two moles of O2. It contains two moles of O2. Two moles of O2 means four moles of O. As simple as that, correct? Now here you can have a look whether I have taken oxygen in atomic or molecular form. I have taken oxygen here in molecular form. So instead of the term mole, can I use gram molecules? Absolutely, I can use the term gram molecules. I can say one mole of H2SO4, it contains two gram molecules of oxygen. It contains two gram molecules of oxygen. Correct? Let me know quickly in the chats if all these things are clear to you. Quickly, my dear students in the chats, because this is very important. Few minutes back, I mean, after few minutes, you'll get to know the importance of all these things which I'm telling you. Because there have been questions which have been directly asked related to these statements. They play with the terminologies, nothing else. And you have to be careful with all the terminologies. Quickly. <clears throat> Quickly, people. 
everyone in the chats. Let me take one more example, then I'll get satisfied that you got to know properly, okay? And you guys are going to let me know in the chats. For example, for example, I'm writing one mole of H2S2O8. One mole of H2S2O8. Let's try to write everything in the atomic form first. I'm taking everything in the atomic form. I'm going to take hydrogen in atomic form, right? Sulfur in atomic form, oxygen as in atomic form as well. Can I say one mole of H2SO4? It contains two moles of H or I can say it contains since hydrogen I have taken in atomic form. So I can use the term gram atoms in terms of moles. I can say two gram atoms of hydrogen. Two gram atoms of hydrogen. Right? Perfectly clear. How many gram atoms of sulfur? I can say two moles of sulfur. Since sulfur I have taken in atomic form. So you can say two gram atoms of sulfur. 2 gram atoms of sulfur. Correct? In the similar way, look at oxygen. Can I say 1 mole of H2S2O8? It contains 8 moles of O. Since oxygen right here I have again taken in atomic form. So instead of the term mole, I can again use gram atoms. I can say 8, 8 gram atoms of oxygen. 8 gram atoms of oxygen, right? Let's try to write all these three statements in terms of gram molecules now. Let's try to write in terms of gram molecules. Can I say 1 mole of H2S2O8, it contains 1 mole of H2? It contains 1 mole of H2, right? It contains 1 mole of H2. Hydrogen over here, have I taken now in atomic form or molecular form? It's in molecular form. So instead of the term mole, I can use gram molecules. So I can say it contains one gram molecule of hydrogen. One gram molecule of hydrogen. Similarly, let's talk about oxygen. Let's talk about oxygen. If I want to take oxygen in molecular form, should I write? Should I write eight gram molecules of oxygen or eight or four gram molecules of oxygen? You tell me in the chats. Should I write? Should I write eight gram molecules of oxygen or four gram molecules of oxygen? You tell me in the chats quickly. Absolutely. You can either say four moles of O2 or you can say you can say four gram molecules of oxygen. I hope you can write all these statements on your own from now onwards related to any molecule. Quickly, give me some thumbs ups in the chats if all these things seem clear to you. Everyone in the chats, quickly. Quickly, my dear students. <clears throat> quickly, my dear students, everyone. I'll show you its application in some time, okay? Let's wait for some time. Let's clear the basics first of all, right? Let's clear all the basic things which are required. Is it clear? I hope it is super clear to you. Yeah? Now, before showing the questions, let's try to relate different things. What is meant by that? Have a look. For example, I'm writing a statement here. I'm writing a statement here. You tell me what is the meaning of the statement. I'm going to relate all the things which we have discussed till now. Okay? For example, I'm writing one mole of carbon dioxide gas. Let's say I'm writing a statement, one mole of carbon dioxide gas at STP, for example, at STP. I have got one mole of carbon dioxide gas at STP. Can you let me know what will be the volume occupied by one mole of carbon dioxide gas at STP? Can you let me know in the chats? Volume occupied by one mole of the gas at STP. That's 22.4 liters. So first of all, I can say one mole of carbon dioxide at STP will be having the volume of 22.4 liters. So my dear students, 
instead of one mole of carbon dioxide gas at STP, you can write 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide gas as well. No issues. Instead of one liter of carbon dioxide, sorry, instead of one mole of carbon dioxide at STP, you can write 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide as well. No issues at all. Correct? Now you can relate these two things as well. Since one mole of carbon dioxide at STP occupies the volume of 22.4 liters. So by chance, I will have two moles of carbon dioxide. So can I say two moles of carbon dioxide will have the volume of, will occupy the volume of 44.8 liters? Simple. If I multiply here with two, here with two. So I'll say two moles of carbon dioxide at STP occupies 44.8 liters volume. Similarly, three moles of carbon dioxide occupies multiplied by three, 67.2 liters. So you can relate these two things directly, right? You can relate these two things directly. Number one, number two, number two. Just tell me one thing. What will be the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide? <clears throat> what will be the, if I ask you, what will be the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide? Mass of one mole of substance, mass of one mole of any substance is what we call as molar mass of the substance. So indirectly, I'm asking you, what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? What is the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide? Can you let me know that? Carbon 12 plus oxygen 16 into 2. So the value comes out to be 44 what? 44 amu or 44 grams. Since I'm ask asking you the molar mass, molar mass is expressed in grams. So you'll write 44 grams of carbon dioxide. So you can relate this particular term with this particular term as well, no issues. I can categorically say the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. Or instead of one mole of carbon dioxide, you can write 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Again, no issues at all. Instead of 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide, you can write 44 grams of carbon dioxide. You can say the mass of 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide at STP will be 44 grams. Yeah? Right? I hope these basic things are becoming clear to you. Correct? Correct, dear students? Now, if it is clear, tell me one more thing. Can I say one mole of carbon dioxide, one mole of carbon dioxide contains it contains one mole of carbon, yes. It contains two moles of O as well. Oxygen here I have taken in atomic form. So instead of mole, you can write two gram atoms of O, two gram atoms of oxygen. Perfect. Now, if I ask you one more thing, what is the mass of one mole of carbon? That means I'm asking you about the molar mass of carbon and you know it, that is 12 grams. That is 12 grams, right? Similarly, if I ask you, what is the mass of one mole of O? Mass of one mole of O means molar mass of O. And molar mass of O is 16 grams. 16 grams is the mass of one mole O. But do I have one mole of O or two moles of O? I have two moles of O. Mass of one mole of O is 16 grams. So mass of two moles of O will be 32 grams. Right? So you can write 32 grams of oxygen, 32 grams of O. Now you can relate all the things. You can say, in one mole of carbon dioxide, there are 12 grams of carbon present. You can say, in one mole of carbon dioxide, there is one mole of carbon present. You can say, in one mole of carbon dioxide, there are two moles of O. You can say, in one mole of carbon dioxide, there are 32 grams of O. Right? Now if I ask you, if I ask you, let's assume you have got two moles carbon dioxide. Can you let me know how many grams of carbon, how many grams of carbon are present in two moles of carbon dioxide? Can you let me know in two moles of carbon dioxide, how many grams of carbon will be there? Since we know in one mole carbon dioxide, there are 12 grams of carbon. So in two moles carbon dioxide, there will be 24 grams of carbon. As simple as that. As simple as that, right? As simple as that. Perfect. Now, you can say one more thing. You can relate any two things, guys. You can say directly, in 44 grams of carbon, 
44 grams of carbon dioxide sorry in 44 grams of carbon dioxide there are 12 grams of carbon present you can say something like that as well in 44 grams of carbon dioxide there are 32 grams of oxygen you can say that as well you can say in 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide there are 32 grams of oxygen there are 12 grams of carbon any two things you can relate directly now any two things you can relate directly now i hope it is super clear to you i hope it is super clear to you okay if i ask you a question if i ask you a question how many grams of carbon are present in 44.8 liters of carbon dioxide and at stp how many grams of carbon are present in 44.8 liters of carbon dioxide you know one thing in 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide there are 12 grams carbon so in 44.8 liter carbon dioxide there will be 24 grams carbon right so directly you can relate the two things you can take any two things and relate them i hope it is becoming clear to you i hope it's becoming clear to you yeah okay so if it is clear to you let's try to solve one simple question let's try to solve some one simple question and understand what the question is let's say i'm making a question like this for example the question is calculate calculate the calculate the gram atoms of oxygen calculate the gram atoms of oxygen present in present in uh, let's say we have got present in 196 grams of H2SO4 this is the question can you give it a try calculate the Calculate the number of gram atoms of oxygen present in 196 grams of H2SO4. Can you do it? Understand the question carefully. Calculate the gram atoms. Gram atoms means moles. Gram atoms means moles. Of what? Calculate the moles of oxygen. Right? Now, do you have to take oxygen in atomic form or molecular form? since you have used the term gram atoms so you have to take oxygen in atomic form so they are asking you calculate the moles of o calculate the moles of o present in 196 grams of h2so4 the first step which you will do in all the questions basically what is that that is to convert the given quantity into moles let's remember this procedure convert the given quantity into moles now what is the given quantity we are given with the mass of H2SO4. We are given with the mass of H2SO4. So first of all, we'll be converting the given mass of H2SO4 into its moles. Now, you tell me, how many moles of H2SO4 do we have? Given mass of H2SO4 in grams, divided by, divided by molar mass of H2SO4, that is 98 grams per mole. The value comes out to be 2. Correct? So you have con converted the given mass of H2SO4 into moles. That is my first step always. So how many moles of H2SO4 we have? Now we can categorically say, either you say that we have got 196 grams of H2SO4, or you say we have got 2 moles of H2SO4. The choice is all yours. So basically we are given with 2 moles of H2SO4. Now dear students, you tell me. You tell me, if I write a statement, <coughs> one mole of h2so4 can you let me know one mole of h2so4 contains how many gram atoms of oxygen how many moles of o i can say one mole of h2so4 it contains four moles of o it contains four moles of o correct it contains four moles of o now it's clear if one mole h2so4 contains four moles of o so 2 moles of H2SO4 will contain 8 moles of O in short. Right? How many moles, how many moles of H2SO4 we have? We have 2 moles of H2SO4. And we already know 1 mole H2SO4, it contains 4 moles of O. So I would say 2 moles of H2SO4. 2 moles of H2SO4 will contain 
4 multiply by 2, the value comes out to be 8 moles of O. Or you can say, or you can say 8 gram atoms of O. You can say 8 gram atoms of oxygen directly. You can say 8 gram atoms of oxygen. I hope it is super clear to everyone. I hope it is super clear to everyone. Let me know quickly in the chats if it is super clear to everyone, people. Quickly in the chats. <clears throat> quickly in the chats. Now what they can do, they can just reverse the same question. They can just reverse the same question. They can give you the same question, but in a reverse format. How exactly? Let's see. Let's see how. They can give you the same question in reverse format as well. So let's have a look how they, how they can, I mean, give the same question in the reverse format. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, people. Now understand properly what I'm going to say. This is important. For example, they're asking you a question like this. Calculate, calculate the mass of H2SO4. Calculate the mass of H2SO4 in grams. In grams. That contains, that contains 8 gram atoms of oxygen that contains 8 gram atoms of oxygen. I've written the same question in the reverse form, nothing else. I've written the same question in the reverse form. Can, we, can you give it a try now? Can you give it a try? Calculate the mass of H2SO4 that contains 8 gram atoms of oxygen. So 8 moles of oxygen basically. Dear students, we already know one thing. If we talk about one mole of H2SO4, one mole of H2SO4 contains what? One mole of H2SO4, it contains four gram atoms of oxygen. Right? This is something which we have discussed. This is something which we have discussed. Now remember one thing. Remember one thing directly. Whose data we have to calculate in this question? Do we have to calculate the data of oxygen or we have to calculate the data of H2SO4? Calculate the mass of H2SO4. We have to calculate the data for H2SO4. In the last question, in the last question, in the last question, calculate the gram atoms of oxygen. In the last question, we had to calculate the data of O, data of oxygen. The one whose data is to be calculated, the one whose data is to be calculated, that has to be always on the right side of this particular statement. See, in this question, we were supposed to calculate the data for oxygen. So oxygen was on the right side of the statement. In the next question, in this question, we have to calculate the data for H2SO4. So H2SO4 has to be on the right side. It has to be on the right side of the statement. So what should we do in order to bring H2SO4 on the right side? We have to reverse the statement. We have to reverse the statement. I can write the same statement in a different format. I can say 4 gram atoms. I can say 4 gram atoms of oxygen. 4 gram atoms of oxygen are present in. Are present in. Are present in 1 mole H2SO4. Correct? No issues still here? The one whose data you have to calculate that has to be on the right side of the statement. So in this question, we were supposed to calculate the mass of H2SO4. That is the reason why I reversed the statement. And I wrote the first statement in a different format. I wrote 4 gram atoms of oxygen are present in 1 mole H2SO4. Now we use the unitary method. Now we use the unitary method. If 4 gram atoms of oxygen are present in 1 mole H2SO4, what about one gram atom of oxygen? What about one gram atom of oxygen? I can say one gram of atom of oxygen will be present in will be present in one by four moles of H2SO4. Right? Will be present in one by four moles of H2SO4. 
Do I have to check one gram atom of oxygen or we have to check eight gram atoms of oxygen? So I can say eight gram atoms of oxygen will be present in one by four multiplied by eight moles of what? Moles of H2SO4. The value comes out be what? The value comes out be two moles of H2SO4. Can you first of all let me know what did I calculate here? Can you let me know what did I calculate? I calculated that 8 gram atoms of oxygen, 8 gram atoms of oxygen are present in 2 moles of H2SO4. I have calculated the moles of H2SO4 which contains 8 gram atoms of oxygen. But was I supposed to calculate the moles of H2SO4? No. I was supposed to calculate the mass of H2SO4. I am supposed to calculate the mass of H2SO4. Do you know how to convert moles into mass? I converted moles of, I calculated moles of H2SO4. But as per the question, I'm not supposed to calculate moles of H2SO4. I have to calculate mass of H2SO4, right? So, what do I do? I'll be writing the mass of H2SO4 will be equal to moles of H2SO4 multiplied by the molar mass of H2SO4. Right? That's how you convert moles into mass. Right? So, it's going to be 2 multiplied by Molar mass of H2SO4 is 98 grams. So the value comes out to be 196 grams. 196 grams of H2SO4. I hope you are remembering the procedure which I have been following. Yeah? Correct? So I got to know, I got to know 196 grams of H2SO4 or you can say 2 moles of H2SO4 contains 8 gram atoms of oxygen. That's something which you were supposed to calculate. You were supposed to calculate that mass of H2SO4 which contains, which contains 8 grams atoms of oxygen. That's something which we did. That's something which we did. Let me know once in the chats with the thumbs ups if it is clear. Let me know once in the chats with the thumbs ups if it is super clear to you. Quickly. <clears throat> Quickly guys, everyone. Let me know quickly in the chats, everyone with the thumbs ups, if it is again clear to you. Yeah? Okay, one more question I'll give you. Let me see how you are going to solve that question. Just a second. Just a second. Let me give you one more question. Let me give you one more question. Let me see if you can solve this question or not. <clears throat> Guys, in mole concept, you don't have to remember the formulas and all, right? You have to use the common sense, basically. Whatever. So first thing always is going to be convert the given quantity into moles, right? And then the one whose data is to be calculated, that has to be on the right side of the statement, that accordingly you can use the unitary method. Two moles contain four moles. One mole contain four by two moles, like that. Simple, right? Yeah? Now I'm giving you one more question. <clears throat> Let me see if you can solve this one or not. Calculate. Calculate the gram atoms. Calculate the gram atoms of oxygen. <clears throat> Calculate the gram atoms of oxygen present in, present in 126 U or 126 AMU of HNO3. Can you give it a try? Can you give it a try? Over here, over here, I'm not writing 126 grams. I'm writing 126 U. 126 U. Can you give it a try? So first of all, if I ask you, first of all, if I ask you, what is the molecular mass of HNO3? Let me tell you the molecular mass of HNO3 is 63 U. You can calculate it. 1 plus 14 plus 16 into 3, that comes out to be 63 U. Right? So first thing, which I want you guys to remember. Molecular mass of HNO3 is 63 U. That means the mass of, the mass of one molecule is 63 U. 63 is the mass of one molecule of HNO3. But as per the question, am I given with 63 U or 126 U? I'm given with 126 U. If 63U is equal to one molecule, that means 126U, if I multiplied 
this equation by 2. If I multiply this equation by 2, it will be 126U is equal to 2 molecules of HNO3. It's equal to 2 molecules of HNO3. So basically, as per the question, as per the question, as per the question, actually we are given with 126U of HNO3. That means we are given with 2 molecules of HNO3. So we have 2 molecules of HNO3 with us. So we have to calculate the number of gram atoms of oxygen present in two molecules of HNO3. That's something which we have to calculate. That's something which we have to calculate, right? Now people, follow the same procedure which I told you. Follow the same procedure. Convert the given quantity into moles. Since you cannot convert this particular quantity directly in moles. The mass has to be in grams, then only you can convert that in moles, right? But over here it was in U. So you're not supposed to divide this term by molar mass. If it was 126 grams, then it was given mass divided by molar mass, by means of which you can calculate the moles. So over here, be careful with this. That's why I, I'm doing this procedure. So indirectly, how many molecules of HNO3 we have? Indirectly, we have two molecules of HNO3. Now follow the same procedure. Convert the given quantity into moles. You cannot convert this quantity into moles directly, but you can convert this quantity into moles. Two molecules of HNO3. Two molecules of HNO3. Can you let me know how many moles of HNO3 we have? Given number of molecules, that's two, divided by Avogadro's number. So these many moles of HNO3 we have. These many moles of HNO3 we have. Right? Now people, if I write one simple statement. One mole of HNO3 one mole of HNO3 contains, I'll say it contains 3 gram atoms of oxygen. It contains 3 gram atoms of oxygen. If one mole HNO3 contains 3 gram atoms of oxygen, so 2 by Na moles of HNO3 must contain 3 multiplied by 2 divided by Na gram atoms of oxygen. Correct? So the answer of this question will be directly 6 divided by Na gram atoms or you can say moles of O. So this is going to be the answer of the question. This is something which we were supposed to calculate. How many gram atoms of oxygen are present in? Are present in 126U of HNO3. 126U of HNO3 means 2 molecules of HNO3. 2 molecules of HNO3 means 2 by Na moles of HNO3. So basically we are supposed to calculate the gram atoms of oxygen present in these many moles of HNO3. So I wrote a statement, one mole of HNO3 contains three gram atoms of O. That means two divided by Na. That means two divided by Na moles of HNO3. Two divided by Na moles of HNO3 will contain these many gram atoms of O. So the final answer of this particular question comes out to be six divided by Na gram atoms. Correct? Okay, if I ask you why I did not reverse this statement, why I did not reverse this particular statement, can you let me know? Why I did not reverse this particular statement? Because the one whose data is to be calculated, that has to be on the right side of the statement. In this question, we were supposed to calculate the data for oxygen. That's why I wrote oxygen on the right side. That's all. Is it clear? Is it clear, people, quickly? Quickly? Quickly, people? <clears throat> quickly let me know the charts is it super clear to you is it super clear to you yeah now I'm going to give you one question of the similar format as the homework you guys will give that a try and let me know the answer of that question in the comment section okay one question I'm giving you as the homework and I'll move on to one more concept. Okay. So let me give you one question as the homework. Just a second. Just a second. Where do I write it? I'm writing the question here. Okay. I'm writing the question here. I'm writing the question here. The question is, this question was once asked in J means and it's a proper neat standard question. Calculate the mass of 
Calculate the mass of H3PO4 that contains that contains <coughs> 0 0.25 gram atoms of oxygen. This is your homework question. You will give it a try. Take a screenshot of this particular slide, then only I can move on to the next concept. Take the screenshot of this slide quickly. Quickly, guys. Take the screenshot of this particular slide quickly. You are going to let me know the answer of this question in the comment section once the video ends, okay? Yeah? Done? <clears throat> Done, people? All right, now, now let me erase this and let's move on to one more very, very, very important concept. Let me move on to one, one, one more very important concept. This question, I mean this particular concept which we are going to discuss now, it is frequently used in states of matter chapter. It is frequently used in thermodynamics. We can relate this concept with equilibrium as well, right? So. Its application is everywhere, basically, as far as your physical chemistry is concerned. So let's have a look exactly what this concept is all about. Average molar mass of a gaseous mixture. So first of all, let me write its definition, then I'll make you understand what it means, okay? The definition is simple. The mass of, the mass of one mole of a gaseous mixture. The mass of one mole of a gaseous mixture is something which you call as is something which you call as average molar mass of the mixture. And that average molar mass of the mixture is represented by MAV. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean? The mass of one mole of a gaseous mixture is something which you call as average molar mass of the gaseous mixture, which is represented by MAV. Let's understand this a bit more in detail. So first of all, as you can see this particular heading, average molar mass of a gaseous mixture. The term is average molar mass of a gaseous mixture. Molar mass means the mass of one mole. Molar mass means the mass of one mole of a substance. And the substance here is gaseous mixture. So the mass of one mole of a gaseous mixture is something which you call as average molar mass. Now what it means, let's try to understand it a bit more in detail. Have a look, people. For example, <clears throat> for example, I'm taking one container over here. Let's say this is the container which I have. Understand properly what I'm going to say. Let's say this is the container, which is closed on all the sides. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this container, for example, contains two chemically non-reacting gases. I'm assuming the container contains two chemically non-reacting gases. Okay, for example, in this particular container, there is N2 gas and with N2 gas, let's assume there is ozone as well, O3. So I'm taking two gases in this particular container. These are two gases in the container. The container is closed on all the sides. Now, if I ask you whether I have got one particular gas in the container or I have got a mixture of gases in this container. I have got a mixture of gases in this container. We have got a mixture of gas in the container, right? So I can categorically say we have got a gaseous, we have got a gaseous mixture present in the container. We have got a gaseous mixture present in the container. And this gaseous mixture, it contains N2 and with N2, it contains O3 as well. Now, dear students, let's assume one more thing. Let's assume there are two moles of N2 and two moles of O3 in this container. Let's assume that. Let's assume there are two moles of N2 and two moles of O3 in this container. So if I ask you one thing, if I ask you one thing, how many total moles are there in the container? You will say two plus two. There are total four moles present in the container. If I ask you how many total moles are present in the gaseous mixture? How many total moles are present in the gaseous mixture? How many total moles are present in the container? 2 plus 2 comes out to be 4, right? 
Absolutely right. If I ask you one more thing, what is the molar mass of N2? What is the molar mass of N2? Molar mass of N2 means mass of one mole of N2. Molar mass of N2 means 14 into 2, 28 grams. Mass of one mole of N2 is 28 grams. Now, if mass of one mole of N2 is 28 grams, if mass of one mole of N2 is 28 grams, so what will be the mass of two moles of N2? If mass of one mole of N2 is 28 grams, so mass of two moles of N2 will be 28 into 2, 56 grams. Simple. Mass of two moles of N2 will be simple 56 grams. Right? Now, now tell me one more thing. What is the molar mass of O3? What is the molar mass of ozone? That is 16 into 3, 48 grams. Molar mass of ozone is 48 grams. That means mass of one mole of ozone is 48 grams. But do I have only one mole of ozone in the container or two moles of ozone? I have two moles of ozone. If mass of one mole of ozone is 48 grams, what do you think will be the mass of two moles of ozone? Will that be 96 grams? Yes, that's going to be 96 grams. Yes, that's going to be 96 grams. Now, dear students, if I ask you, what is the mass of the gaseous mixture in the container? What is the mass of this whole mixture? Since the mixture contains two gases and the mass of N2 in the container is 56 grams, the mass of O3 in the container is 96 grams. So if I ask you, what is the mass of whole mixture, whole gaseous mixture? This gas has got the mass of I mean, two moles of N2 has got the mass of 56 grams. Two moles of O3 has got the mass of 96 grams. So 96 plus 56 makes it how much? It makes it 152 grams. This is the mass of the mixture. Right? Do you agree with this? Now, people, if you agree with this particular statement, then you should have no problem in the statement which I'm going to write. Can I say, as per the current scenario, Four moles of gaseous mixture, four moles of gaseous mixture, how got the mass of 152 grams? Four moles of gaseous mixture has got the mass of 152 grams. Now use the unitary method. If four moles of gaseous mixture has got the mass of 152 grams, tell me what will be the mass of one mole of gaseous mixture? Can I say the mass of one mole of gaseous mixture will be 152 divided by four? The value comes out to be 4 something, 152 divided by 4 grams. Let's keep it as such. If I ask you, what did I calculate here? What is this term? If I ask you, what is this term? What did I calculate? This is basically the mass of one mole of gaseous mixture. And the mass of one mole of the gaseous mixture is something which we call as average molar mass of the mixture. So can I say this particular term is basically the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. Right? This particular term, 152 divided by 4 grams, it is the mass of 1 mole of the gaseous mixture. And you already know, mass of 1 mole of the gaseous mixture is something which I call as average molar mass. Right? So this particular term, it is the mass of 1 mole of the gaseous mixture, or you can call it as the mass of, I mean, you can call it directly as, you can call it directly as the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. Yeah, I hope this is clear to everyone. Now you must be thinking, why did I do it? Why did I do all this stuff? I did all this stuff. I did all this stuff to make one result. I did all this stuff to make one result. By using that result, you can minimize your time of solving the questions. And what is that result? Have a look. Since we calculated the average motor mass, MAV, if I want to make a formula directly to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture, in the formula there should be two terms, one in numerator, one in denominator. Look at this particular term. In the numerator you have 152 grams. And what was this 152 grams? That was the mass of gaseous mixture. So in the numerator you will be always writing the mass of the mixture in grams divided by. In the denominator, we have got 4. And what was 4? Four? 4 was the total moles present in the gaseous mixture. So this is the formula which you guys are going to use directly from now onwards to calculate the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. Whenever you will be having a container 
which contains two or more than two chemically non-reacting gases at that particular point of time, you will be calculating the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. And that average molar mass of the gaseous mixture is represented by MAV and the result by means of which you will calculate the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. That will be mass of the gaseous mixture in grams divided by total moles present in the gaseous mixture. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. Now, dear students, let's elaborate all this. Let's make certain results so that you can solve the questions in very less time. Let's try to make certain results now. Let's try to make certain results. And before making the results, before making the results, what is the formula by means of which you can calculate the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture? It is equal to the mass of the gaseous mixture in grams divided by total moles present in the gaseous mixture. This is the first result by means of which we can calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. Now, what are the other results which will save your time? See, <clears throat> see the other results. For example, this is one closed container. Container which is closed on all the sides. Let's assume this particular container, it contains two chemically non-reacting gases, gas one and gas two. These are two chemically non-reacting gases present in the container. Okay, two chemically non-reacting gases present in the container, gas one, gas two. Yeah, now, let's assume the mass of gas one in the container is W1 grams. The mass of gas two in the container is W2 grams. Let's assume the moles of gas one in the container is N1. The moles of gas two present in the container is N2. Let's assume that. Let's say the molar mass of the gas one is M1. Molar mass of gas two is M2. Let's assume the mole fraction of gas one is chi one. Mole fraction of gas two in the container is chi two. Let's assume that. Let's say volume of gas one in the container is V1. Volume of gas two in the container is V2. I'm giving you all the possible results from which the question can be asked. All the possible results, understand. Understand people. We have got two chemically non-reacting gases. W1 stands for the mass of gas one in the container. N1 stands for moles of gas one in the container. M1 stands for molar mass of gas one. Chi1 stands for mole fraction of gas one. V1 stands for volume of gas one. Right? Yeah? Right? Now, dear students, understand. Since I told you already, whenever you have got two or more than two chemically non-reacting gases in the container, that means you can say we have got a gaseous mixture in the container. And what do we calculate for the gaseous mixture? We first of all, whenever in any chapter, be it thermodynamics, be it equilibrium, whenever you see a gaseous mixture, the first step always you'll be doing you will be calculating the average molar mass of the mixture. Whenever in any chapter you see two or more than two chemically non-reacting gases enclosed in the same container, the first step which you will follow all the time is to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. Average molar mass of the mixture. And average molar mass of the mixture is represented by MAV. And how do we calculate MAV? Mass of the gaseous mixture. If I ask you what is the mass of whole gaseous mixture, you will say it is W1 plus W2, right? So instead of W mixture, you will say W1 plus W2, right? This gives me the mass of whole gaseous mixture divided by total moles present in the mixture. That's going to be N1 plus N2. That's going to be N1 plus N2. You can use this particular result as well, no issues at all. You can use this particular result as well to calculate what? To calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. And what is meant by average molar mass of the mixture? It is basically the mass of one mole of the gaseous mixture. At the same time, if I ask you one more thing, how do we calculate moles? Moles is equal to given mass in grams divided by molar mass. Given mass by molar mass. So if I want to calculate W from here, can I say W is equal to M multiplied by N? W is equal to M multiplied by N. So if I write 1, 1 and 1 here, will it make a difference? W1 is equal to M1, N1. W2 is equal to M2, N2, W3 is equal to M3, N3, W4 is equal to M4, N4, right? So my dear students, I can make one more result over here. What is it going to be? Instead of W1, you can write M1, N1. Instead of W2, you can write M2, N2 divided by, in the denominator, you already have N1 plus N2. 
This is one more result by means of which you can calculate the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. Yeah? Perfect. How many results I made till now? I made three results. Out of these three results, three different questions can be formed. I'll show you the questions as well. But before showing you the questions, there can be few more results which can be made. What are those results? Have a look. If you look at this particular result properly, M average is equal. Can I write this result in a different format? See, N1 plus N2, it's a denominator. It is a denominator for this term as well as this term, right? So you can write M1, N1 divided by N1 plus N2 plus M2, N2 divided by N1 plus N2. You can write it like this as well, no issues. Completely fine. So I can write MAV is equal to M1 I'm writing as such. M1 I'm writing as such. N1 divided by N1 plus N2. N1 divided by N1 plus N2. What is N1? Moles of gas 1. What is N1 plus N2? Total moles present in the mixture. So N1 divided by N1 plus N2, should I be calling that as mole fraction of 1? Mole fraction of gas 1, right? Plus M2 I'm writing as such. N2 divided by N1 plus N2. That's something which I call as mole fraction of gas 2. So this is one more result by means of which you can calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. M1 chi 1 plus N2 chi 2. There will be some questions in which you'll be directly given with the mole fraction of gas 1, mole fraction of gas 2. Then directly you will be using this result, getting the average molar mass of the mixture. Nothing else you have to do. Nothing else you have to do. Correct? Nothing else you have to do. Now dear students, one more thing I'm going to let you know. What is that? Have a look. If, for example, by chance, this particular gaseous mixture was present at constant pressure and temperature. Since we have got a gaseous mixture in the container. Let's say the pressure of the mixture was fixed. It was not changing with time. Let's say temperature of the mixture was fixed. It was not changing with time. I can say the gaseous mixture is present at constant pressure and temperature. Yeah? I can say at that point of time, if the pressure of the mixture is not changing with time, if the temperature of the mixture is not changing with time, I can say the mixture in the container is kept at constant pressure and temperature. Right? Have you studied the ideal gas equation ever? You would have, I'm sure. What is the ideal gas equation all about? PV is equal to NRT, right? PV is equal to NRT. This is the ideal gas equation. PV is equal to NRT, correct? My dear students, am I keeping the pressure and temperature of the mixture constant? Yes, I'm keeping the pressure of the mixture and temperature of the mixture constant. Is R value already constant? The universal gas constant. Yes, R is already constant. So can I say at constant pressure and temperature, volume is directly proportional to moles? Yeah, I'm keeping pressure and temperature constant. R is already constant. So I can say at constant pressure and temperature, Volume is directly proportional to moles. Yeah? Volume is directly proportional to moles. So I can say at constant pressure and temperature, at constant pressure and temperature, if, if volume is directly proportional to moles, we can make one more result to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. Instead of volume, instead of moles, you can write the term volume. So wherever in this expression, Wherever in this expression you are seeing the term moles, you can replace the moles by the corresponding volume. So instead of N1, you can write V1. Instead of N2, you can write V2. So my new expression becomes M1 V1 plus M2 V2 divided by what? Divided by V1 plus V2. But this particular expression, to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture, it's valid only when the gaseous mixture is present at constant pressure and temperature. Yeah? This is the particular mixture which is valid. This is a particular expression which is only valid when the mixture is present at constant pressure and temperature. I hope it is super clear to you. I hope it is super clear to you. Quickly in the chats. There can be one more type of question which can be formed. What is that? Do remember one more thing. There can be some other fancy terminologies used in the question. They will be giving you the data for mole percentage. They will tell you mole percentage of gas 1 is 40. Mole percentage of gas 2 is something something. Mole percentage data they can give you. 
Do you remember? These are just the fancy terminologies which are used in the question just to confuse you, nothing else. Mole percentage is nothing, it is mole fraction multiplied by 100. Mole fraction multiplied by 100. Mole fraction of gas 1 is chi 1. If I multiply chi 1 with 100, I'll get mole percentage of gas 1. If I multiply chi 2 with 100, I'll get mole percentage of gas 2, nothing else. So dear students, dear students, look at this expression. This expression is in terms of mole fraction. So can I convert the same expression in terms of mole percentage? Yes, you can do that. MAV is equal to, you'll write M1 as such. What is chi 1? Chi 1 is mole fraction of gas 1. So instead of mole fraction of gas 1, can I write mole percentage of gas 1 divided by 100 plus M2 I'm writing as such. It's going to be M2 I'm writing as such. It's going to be mole percentage of gas 2 divided by 100. So this is one more final expression which you can use in the questions as well. So how many expressions we have? Since mole percentage is mole fraction multiplied by 100. So mole fraction is mole percentage divided by 100. That's why instead of mole fraction, I used mole percentage divided by 100. So how many expressions we have to calculate the average molar mass? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So five different types of questions can be asked from this particular concept. Five different concepts can be asked. I mean five different questions can be asked out of this concept. So let me quickly recap the things which we discussed. Then we'll be doing the questions. Whenever you will be having two or more than two chemically non-reacting gases present in the container, at that point of time, you have got a gaseous mixture in the container. The mass of one mole of gaseous mixture is something which you call as average molar mass. And whenever in any chapter you will find two or more than two chemically non-reacting gases in the container, you'll close your eyes and the first step which you will do is to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. And how many formulas do we have to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture? Mass formula, mass valley formula, moles valley formula, mole fraction molar result, volume molar result, and mole percentage result. But this particular result, the volume result, it is valid only when the pressure and temperature of the mixture is kept constant. Okay, let's try to do some basic questions so that you can understand the whole stuff properly. Okay. So the first question, which is very simple and basic, which is just the formula based question. Let me see if you can solve this or not. Calculate the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture. So basically, you have got a container, for example, and this container contains how many gases? Three gases, gas A, gas B, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry guys. So. We have got a container basically and this particular container contains three gases. Gas A, gas B and gas C. Instead of A, B, C, I'll use one, two, three. So we have got, for example, three chemically non-reacting gases in the container. What is the gas, what is the mass of gas one as per the equation? The mass of gas one in the container is 4.4 grams. What is the mass of gas two in the container? The mass of gas two in the container is given to us as 6.4 grams. The mass of gas three in the container is given to us as 4.8 grams. This is something which is given. This is something which is given. One more thing. What is the molar mass of gas one? It's given us as, it's given to us as 44 grams per mole. What is the molar mass of gas two? Molar mass of gas two is 64 grams per mole. What is molar mass of gas three? Molar mass of gas three is 48 grams per mole. Correct? This is some data which is given to me. Now you tell me one thing. We are given with three chemically non-reacting gases in the container. What do we have to calculate? Average molar mass of the gaseous mixture which is there in the container. How many results we have? Five. Out of five, which one do I use? We are given with the masses of individual gases. We are given with the masses of individual gases. So I'll be directly using the first result to calculate average molar mass of the mixture. That's W1 plus W2 plus W3 divided by N1 plus N2 plus N3. Perfect. W1, W2, W3 is given to us. W1, W2, W3 is given to us. But this N1, N2, N3 is not given to us. Right? This N1, N2, N3 is not given to us. So let's try to calculate N1 first. What is N1? Number of moles of gas 1 in the container. 
can i say number of moles of gas 1 in the container will be equal mass of gas 1 divided by molar mass of gas 1 and mass of gas 1 is 4.4 grams molar mass of gas 1 is 44 grams the value will be 0 0.1 so i got the value of n1 similarly n2 value given mass of gas 2 divided by molar mass of gas 2 what is w2 6.4 grams what is m2 64 grams per mole 0 0.1 number of moles of gas 3 w3 divided by m3 what is w3 w3 is 4.8 grams divided by m3 is 48 the value again is 0 0.1 so n1 n2 n3 we calculated n1 n2 n3 we calculated now use in the equation w1 is 4.4 grams w2 is 6.4 grams w3 is 4.8 grams divided by n1 is 0 0.1 n2 is again 0 0.1 n3 is again 0 0.1 just solve it you'll get the average molar mass of the gaseous mixture can you let me know in the chats if it is super clear to everyone quickly people can you let me know in the chats Quickly, people. <clears throat> Quickly, let me know in the chats if it is super clear to everyone. Let me know in the chats if it is super duper clear to everyone. <clears throat> okay. So let's move on to one more question. Let me see if you can solve this one or not. Okay, one simple question I'm giving you, okay? One simple question. As per the question is concerned, we have got a gaseous mixture which contains 60 mole percentage of carbon dioxide, 40 mole percentage of O2. Calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. Again, a simple question. So this is a container. And in this container, what do we have? We have got carbon dioxide. And with carbon dioxide, we have got O2. So carbon dioxide is, for example, our gas 1 and O2 is, for example, our gas 2. So first thing, if I ask you, what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? You will say it's 44 grams per mole. What is the molar mass of O2? What is the molar mass of O2? Molar mass of O2 is 32 grams per mole. 32 grams per mole, right? This is something which every one of you will be knowing. Now, am I given with the mole percentage of carbon dioxide? Yes. Mole percentage of gas 1 is given. Even mole percentage of gas 2 is given. And what are we supposed to calculate? We are supposed to calculate the average molar mass of the mixture. Right? So which expression I'll be using? I gave you one expression in terms of mole percentage. So I'll be using that result only. So average molar mass of the mixture is equal to M1 multiplied by mole percentage of gas 1 divided by 100 plus M2 multiplied by mole percentage of gas 2 divided by 100. Correct, dear students? So, average molar mass of the mixture is equal to M1 value, we know that's 44. Mole percentage of gas 1, that's 60, divided by 100. Plus M2 value is 32. Mole percentage of gas 2 is 40, divided by 100. Just give it a try, solve it. And what is the answer? What is the answer? Answer will be 30 point something. I guess it will be 39.2. 39.2. This is the average molar mass of the mixture, which you were supposed to calculate, right? This is the average molar mass of the mixture, which you were supposed to calculate as far as the question. That means the mass of one mole of the mixture is equal to 39.2 grams. As simple as that. I hope again this sort of a question is clear. Asha, by the way, by the way, if this if this part was not given in the question, if this part was not given in the question, if the question was like this, okay, a mixture contains carbon dioxide and oxygen in which mole percentage of carbon dioxide is 60 and it was not mentioned what is the mole percentage of oxygen, then directly we know the sum of mole percentage is always 100, right? If this is 60, the other one has to be 40. The way sum of mole fractions is 1, in the similar way, the sum of mole percentage is 100. Right? Do keep this thing in mind as well. Do keep this thing in mind as well. Okay? Let me mention it over here. See, chi 1 plus chi 2 plus dash 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 is always equal to 1. And 
मोल परसेंटेज सम ऑफ मोल परसेंटेज मोल परसेंटेज ऑफ वन प्लस मोल परसेंटेज ऑफ टू प्लस मोल परसेंटेज ऑफ थ्री डैश डैश इज ऑलवेज इक्वल हंड्रेड राइट डू टेक ए नोट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग एज वेल लेट्स मो ऑन लेट्स मो ऑन टू वन मोर क्वेश्चन लुक एट दिस क्वेश्चन गाइज Look at this question. As far as this question is concerned, at twenty-seven degrees centigrade and one atm, at twenty-seven degrees centigrade and one atm pressure, a given mixture of O two and SO two, a given mixture of O two and SO two contains gases in two is to one volume ratio. Okay, calculate the number of moles present in twenty grams of the mixture. See what the question is and have a look how we are going to solve it. For example. This is a container which we have, and in this container we have got two gases. One is your O2 and one is your SO2. These are the two gases present in the container. Let me just to simplify. Let me call O2 as gas one. Let me call SO2 as gas two. Okay. If I ask you what is the molar mass of gas one, it is 32 grams per mole. What is the molar mass of SO2? What is the molar mass of SO2? It's 64 grams per mole. You can calculate it as well. Right? These are the two gases which are there in the container. These are the two gases which are there in the container. As far as the equation is concerned, these gases in the container they are present in the volume ratio of two is to one. The volume ratio of the gases is two is to one. Is two is to one. Okay. Calculate the number of moles present in twenty grams of the mixture. So mass of the whole mixture is given to me. Mass of the whole gaseous mixture is twenty twenty grams. What do we have to calculate? We have to calculate total moles present in the mixture. This has to be calculated. We have to calculate the total moles present in the gaseous mixture. My dear students, number of moles we have to calculate. Number of moles is given mass by molar mass, but this is number of moles of the mixture. So number of moles of the mixture is going to be mass of the gaseous mixture divided by molar mass of the gaseous mixture. and molar mass of the gaseous mixture is something which we call as average molar mass of the mixture nothing else i mean i'm using the first result mav is equal w mixture divided by moles mixture like this result i'm saying this particular result right this particular result i'm using in the question we have to calculate this term so this term i kept here and the other one in the denominator that's it correct so we have got two gases in the container the gases are present in 2 is to 1 volume ratio the mass of the gaseous mixture is 20 grams we have to calculate how many total moles are present in 20 grams of the mixture how many total moles are present in 20 grams of the mixture now understand number of moles in the mixture is equal to mass of the mixture divided by molar mass of the mixture well people if i ask you what is the mass of the mixture that's 20 grams Is the molar mass of the mixture, which is what you call as average molar mass of the mixture, given? No, it's not given. So the point is, we have to calculate average molar mass of the mixture first, then put the value here and get the total moles present in the mixture. That's something which we have to do, right? Yes. Now the point is, how do we calculate this average molar mass of the mixture? How do we calculate this average molar mass of the mixture? My dear students, since we are given with one particular mixture over here, and it's mentioned that the temperature and pressure of the mixture is fixed, it's constant, and we know if the temperature and pressure of the mixture is fixed, it's constant. So, which result I'll be using to calculate average molar mass? Should I be using mass result? Should I be using mole fraction? Or should I be using volume result? There is only one result which is valid at constant pressure and temperature. That's volume molar result. So I'll be using the result. Which one? I'll be using this particular result. M1 V1 plus M2 V2 divided by what? Divided by V1 plus V2. Why did I use this result? Because the given mixture it's kept at constant pressure and temperature. Okay. Now already M1 M2 we know. M1 M2 we know. But what is V1 V2? As far as the equation, the gases are present in two is to one volume ratio. So let's assume that the volume of O2 is 2x and volume of SO2 is going to be x. So let me call this as V1. Let me call this as V2. Done, understood, right? So put the values. M1 value is 32. V1 value is 2x. 
m2 value is 64 v2 value is x divided by v1 plus v2 is 2x plus x makes it 3x right so it's going to be 64x plus 64x that means 128x divide by what divide by 3x the value comes out to be 128 divided by 3 what is this 128 by 3 this is the average molar mass of the mixture so its units are supposed to be in grams per mole this is the average molar mass of the mixture since you calculated the average molar mass of the mixture so put it in this expression so it's 20 divided by average molar mass of the mixture is 128 by 3 so the final answer of the equation is 60 divided by 128 so what is the 60 divided by 128 these are the total moles these are the total moles present in 20 grams of the gaseous mixture which is something i was supposed to calculate so let me know quickly in the chats if it is again super clear to you quickly guys this is something i was supposed to calculate total moles of total moles present in 20 grams of the gaseous mixture so these are the total moles which are present in 20 grams of the gaseous mixture quickly in the chats if it is clear everyone with the thumbs ups everyone with the thumbs ups quickly yeah perfectly done okay so let's move on to one more question then <clears throat> Let's move on to one more question. Look at this question then. Look at the other question. The question is, 600 ml mixture of O2 and O3 at STP, it weighs one gram. Calculate the volume of ozone in the mixture. It's one good question, right? So this, if a question is asked from average molar mass of the mixture, this is the toughest question which can be asked in your need right if they ask the toughest question from average molar mass of the mixture this can be the toughest question as far as the need is concerned okay so let's see how this sort of a question is to be solved and what all things are given to us understand what is given first of all let's assume this is the container which we have and in this container we have got two gases one is your o2 one is o3 so these are two gases present in the container right let me call this O2 gas as gas 1, this is gas 2, right? So first thing, molar mass of gas 1, that is 32 grams per mole. Molar mass of gas 2, that is 48 grams per mole. This is understood? Okay, this is understood. Now dear students, as per the question, it's mentioned that the volume of the whole gaseous mixture is 600 ml. And 600 ml mixture of O2 and O3, it weighs 1 gram. That means the mass of the whole mixture is one gram. One gram is the mass of whole mixture. One gram is not only the mass of O2. One gram is mass of O2 plus mass of O3 in the container. This one gram is the mass of whole gaseous mixture. At the same time, if I ask you, what is the volume of the whole gaseous mixture? Volume of the whole gaseous mixture is given to us as 600 ml. So the volume of whole gaseous mixture is 600 ml. Is 600 ml only the volume of O2? No. Volume of O2 plus volume of O3 is equal to 600. Let me first of all assume that, let me assume out of 600 ml, there are some X ml of O2 in the container. That means the remaining will be 600 minus X. So this is going to be the volume of ozone in the container. As simple as that. Right? As simple as that. Correct? If the volume of whole mixture is 600 ml, out of 600, let's assume X ml is the volume of O2 in the container. So 600 minus X will be the volume of O3 in the container. Since I got the individual volume of these gases, so these individual volumes I'll be representing with V1 and V2 respectively. Correct? Correct people? What do I have to calculate? Volume of ozone in the mixture. Volume of ozone in the mixture means I have to calculate the value of V2. V2 is 600 minus X. So basically, I have to get the value of X. I have to get the value of X. Now the point is, how do I get the value of X? How do I get the value of X? Let's have a look. 
as far as the question is concerned, if I ask you, what is the volume of the whole mixture? 600 ml. The mixture is present at STP. The mixture is present at STP. The mixture is present at STP. So if I ask you, how many moles are there in the mixture? You will say, given volume of the mixture in ml divided by 22400 ml. This will give you the total moles present in the mixture. So these are the total moles present in the mixture. These are the total moles present in the container. 6 divided by 224. My dear students, one more thing. Do we know the mass of the gaseous mixture? Yes, we know. It's 1 gram. So, I could have calculated number of moles with the help of mass as well. I can say number of moles present in the mixture is equal to mass of the mixture. Or let me write it over here again. Number of moles present in the gaseous mixture is equal to it can be written like this as well. Mass of the mixture divided by molar mass of the mixture, which is basically average molar mass, right? What is the mass of mixture? It's one gram divided by MAV. So this is one more way of calculating the total moles present in the mixture. This is one more way of calculating the total moles present in the mixture. The first, it gives me the total moles present in the mixture with the help of volume result. This again gives me the same thing, total moles present in the mixture with the help of mass thing. Now look at equation 1 and 2, number of moles present in the mixture, number of moles present in the mixture. So from equation 1 and 2, I can directly equate these two. I can say 1 divided by MAV is nothing, it is equal to 6 upon 2 to 4, 6 upon 2 to 4. So from this particular expression, I can categorically say MAV is nothing. MAV is equal to 2 to 4 divided by 6 grams. This is the average molar mass of the mixture. This is the mass of 1 mole of a gaseous mixture. Correct? But do I have to calculate M average? No. I have to calculate volume of ozone in the mixture. But what did I got till now? What did I get till now? M average. Average molar mass is equal to 2 to 4 divided by 6. My dear students, the mixture is present at STP. STP means standard temperature pressure. Temperature 0 degree centigrade, pressure 1 atm. So the temperature of the mixture is fixed, 0 degree centigrade. Pressure of the mixture is also fixed, 1 atm. If the pressure and temperature of the mixture is fixed, it's constant. Instead of MAV, can I write M1V1 plus M2V2 divided by V1 plus V2? And this value is equal to 2 to 4 divided by 6. Absolutely. M1 value, it's 32. V1 value, that's x. M2 value, that's 48. V2 value, that's 600 minus x divided by V1 plus V2. V1 plus V2 comes out to be 600 only. Is equal to 2 to 4 divided by 6. Look at this particular equation. Just cross multiple. Just cross multiple. Just cross multiple. You'll be getting one equation and one unknown, that's x. One equation and one unknown, that's x. From here, can't you calculate x? Can't you calculate x? When you cross multiple here, as far as I remember, x value will come out to be, I think x value will come out to be, anyways, you check it once again at home, okay? But as far as I have some, some memory in the back of the mind, right? x value after solving, I think will come out to be 200 ml. Like after cross multiplying, x value will come out to be 200. If x is 200, that means 600 minus x will be, 600 minus 200 will be 400, right? So this is the value of basically v1. So v1 is equal to 200 and v2 has to be 600 minus 200. That means 400. What was this v2? v2 was the volume of ozone present in the mixture, which we were supposed to calculate as far as the question was concerned. Now let me know quickly in the chats if it is Super duper clear to everyone. Quickly, my dear students, is every single thing clear? Yes. Is every single thing clear till here now? Right?
परफेक्टली डन गाइस Perfect. So this was average molar mass of the gaseous mixture and other concepts which we discussed in the previous session. So dear students, I would want you guys to join the tomorrow session again, and and tomorrow at seven we shall be discussing some important topics. One is vapor density, one is percentage composition, and one more is stoichiometry. Right. So this was all from my side in the today's session. I hope you enjoyed the session. these are the different problem patterns which can be asked basically nothing can be asked apart from this right that you can take in writing yeah so i'm saying x value is coming out to be 400 okay if x is coming out to be 400 that means this has to be 200 i told you right it can either this is 400 or this is 400 accordingly you'll manage okay uh alan you do not worry the avengers batch which is going to start tomorrow you will be having its excess till need 2024 examination don't worry okay don't worry the question which i gave you as the homework do let me know its answer in the comment section right after the session sir you won't take names of students okay all right krishna kumar thank you for letting me know that the x value is 400 <laughs> yeah Hello guys. See you. See you tomorrow. Do revise the session properly and make the proper notes because all this with whatever I'm teaching, I'm teaching in detail, in depth, right? I'm not going to miss any of the problem pattern here also, right? So I would want you guys to be consistent, follow all the sessions properly with honesty, make proper notes, yeah? And that's it. Take care. God bless you all. See you tomorrow at 7. Bye bye.